Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimonSysStamp.com. Today I'm going to be creating three different cards using Distress Oxide inks. These are inspired by this ink blending combo that I shared a little bit ago. And I wanted to create three backgrounds using the same color palette, but different techniques. So first I'm going to prep all three of my surfaces that I'll be using. And so I'm going to be stamping the Delicate Floral Mandala background stamp from Simus' stamp, and I'm gonna put it in my Misty. So I'm removing that kind of thicker mouse pad layer so that it can accommodate the thicker cling background stamp. I've got all six by six pieces of paper, and this first time that I'm stamping this stamp set, or this cling stamp, I should say, I'm using some plain white cardstock. This is some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And I prepped it with an anti-static powder tool and then I'm stamping my background stamp with Versamark ink. I'm going to be heat embossing on top using white heat embossing powder. So I just wanted to prep the area really, really well, stamp down every single piece of that design with some Versamark and then I'm applying the embossing powder. Now this is alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, and you'll notice that I have a ton of powder in my container. Uh, Brutus Monroe actually sells a really, really large container of this embossing powder. So I'll link it down below. It's for sale in the Simon store as well. So I'm using my heat tool to melt all of the embossing powder, and this is going to create a really slick line for the design that I can use as a resist when I do my techniques. So once again, this first paper was regular white cardstock. I repeated those steps with two pieces of six by six watercolor paper as well. And I'll tell you about that watercolor paper when we get to it. For this first technique, I'm going to be doing ink blending. So I'm putting my domed blending foams on each one of my mini round blending tools. And I'm going to be using uh, those tools just to bring a bunch of ink over onto my project. Starting with Kitsch Flamingo, such a nice, bright, cool-toned pink. Really, really love this color. And I'm going to bring it in in just a couple of different spots. Now, if you wanted to do a very traditional linear blend, like you see over on the edge of the screen here, you definitely could. I wanted to do something a little bit more um, eclectic or sporadic. I wanted to have different bands of color and different you know, in different areas. So that's how I did all of my blending. I came in with the next color, which is Seedless Preserves, kind of just brought it in in some little spots. And then now I'm adding my third color, which is Mermaid Lagoon. And when Mermaid Lagoon mixes with these two red kind of violet shades, it makes the most beautiful purple. It's just absolutely wonderful. So I really wanted to have lots of areas where you get this nice purple color come through. So I did bring in more of that Seedless Preserves, made sure I overlapped it with Mermaid Lagoon and just tried to fill in all of the areas. So the thing that's really fun about using embossing powder for your stamp design is that it resists any ink that's put on top. It's so fun. So in order to just bring out that bright whiteness of the embossing powder, I wiped off that whole surface area with a paper towel. That just wipes off any of the ink that might be sitting on top of the embossing powder. So you can see a little bit of that ink comes off on my paper towel. All in all, really love this background. Let's go on to background two. Now remember, this is watercolor paper. This is actually Canson XL watercolor paper. And I'm taping it to a hardboard so that as I watercolor on top, it stays really, really flat. So I'm taping it down just with some blue painter's tape. So like I said, we're gonna be watercoloring. Yes, you can watercolor with Distress Oxide inks. It works very similarly to the regular original Distress inks. You just have to kind of smush your ink pad down onto a slick surface and then pick up that ink with a wet brush. If you want to kind of get a really concentrated color and kind of skip the ink smushing part, you could just take your reinker, put it on a slick surface and pick it up like that, just like a liquid watercolor. 
I'm using a size, well, I'm not even sure what size brush it is. It's just a big one. You can use whatever big brush you have on hand. Usually the bigger, the better for a background like this. But I'm just picking up water with my brush, bringing it to those different colors, and then just really messily painting down onto my background. And you can see that when you use a more liquid medium, as opposed to just that ink with the ink blender, it still does that same resist. So all that white heat embossing underneath the watercolor, just kind of push the watercolor right off. And I love to do it this way as opposed to, to stamping and embossing after I've added my color because the raised edges of the embossed design kind of act as the walls to a well and you get those really intense colors just collecting inside those wells and it, it makes just for a really, really beautiful technique. So I'm just getting these colors to mix a little bit right on my project and then I'm going to set it aside to dry. And I set it aside to dry for probably about 10, 15 minutes. I actually did speed it up with my heat tool just a tiny bit. And then we're gonna come back and do one additional step. Notice how much lighter that is now. So, so pretty. I'm spraying water into the palm of my hand and then letting it kind of flick down onto that project. I love this technique. It's so wonderful with distress inks. Uh, the original or oxides, because you can pull up color. It's almost like you're bleaching the color out with water. I like to pick up my hardboard and kind of tip things around back and forth. That really gets the water moving. And then you put a paper towel down on top and it lifts up some color. It's a little bit hard to see on this very kind of busy background, but it did add some little spots of white that are really, really pretty. It looks very ethereal. After my background was complete, I removed it from the board just by carefully peeling off that painter's tape. And we're gonna move on to our third background. Now this one is also kind of a watercolor technique, but I think it's even more fun. It's very freeing. You don't really know how it's gonna turn out and it has a really fun effect. So I'm gonna be smushing the ink pads down onto this slick surface again. By the way, this is an easy clean mat from Tonic. And I'm gonna smush down the three colors in a very random pattern. I just want those colors to sort of almost overlap and intersect, but still leave a little bit of a gap in between. I'm gonna spritz that with my uh, Distress Spray Tool, my Distress Sprayer, just until I've got like water droplets or beads of color. And then I'm going to put my project face down, right down onto that ink. Remember, this is watercolor paper. I suggest watercolor paper for any of the techniques that have a lot of water involved. So you'll notice that you don't get as much mixing of color when you do it this way. But I really wanted more purple, some of the purple when you have those colors mixed. So I dragged my watercolor project through the puddles that are on my work surface. And it starts to mix some of those together and get more of a purple shade. I used my heat tool to dry this and I just made sure to move my heat tool around, not leave it in one spot for too long so that it would remelt the embossing powder. As long as you keep it moving, you should be totally okay. So that's what it looks like, really, really beautiful as is, but I'm gonna pounce it back into that, those puddles of paint one more time or a few more times to get a little bit of a variation in color. This is really going to add a lot more purple areas. I just, just really became obsessed with the purple shades that I got when I mixed these colors and I wanted to add more to this particular background. I'm kind of shaking it around, tapping it, getting some of those um, more wet areas on my background to kind of move around a little bit. And at this point, it was starting to look really, really perfect. So I grabbed my heat tool and I just, once again, kept it moving around. Didn't want to heat in one area too long until everything was dry. And you can see that this has a really different look in comparison to the traditional watercolor background. I'm going to show these two side by side so you can see. On the left, we have the ink smush background and on the right, we have the watercolor. I'm gonna bring in the ink blended and that one looks even more different. All of these have a very different look, whereas the two water-based ones kind of have similar colors. 
So since I have three backgrounds, I'm going to do three different greetings to make three cards. So I've got the You're on My Heart die, the Basic Box Card Happy Birthday die, which was actually sized for a Basic Box Card, and then I've got the I Think I'll Keep You die set. So I cut out all of the shadows out of uh, vellum, the, like the shadow layers, and then I cut the greetings themselves just out of white cardstock and glued them onto the vellum using some liquid glue. I just used some honeybee adhesive glue, but any liquid glue you could use for this particular part. Using my tweezers to get that heart right in the right place. And then I'm going to cut down my backgrounds. I'm using the Waffle Flower A7 layer size because I'm going to, you know, since I made six by six backgrounds, these are kind of bigger. So I'm going to utilize as much as I can and make five by seven cards. So I'm picking out a die and then I'll run all three of these through my die cutting machine. So they're the perfect size for a five by seven card base. I adhered them using some ThermoWeb 3D foam tape and I just put a bunch of foam tape on the back and then adhered them to white card bases. These are all going to be portrait cards, um, you know, so that they're tall cards. And I'm going to be adhering each one of these greetings with a little bit of foam tape. I've just cut really thin strips of foam tape to put behind the white letters that are adhered to the vellum and then pressing them down onto the card. So all in all, these card designs are very, very simple and clean. The fun and the creation of these cards is in those backgrounds. I think they're so phenomenal. And you could like play with different color combinations. You know, he embossed, you know, three or four different backgrounds and then just have fun and play. Do some ink blending, do some water coloring, do some ink smushing. Have fun with all those different oxides. And you could also do these same techniques with the original Distress inks. Make sure you check out the supply section down below. Everything I've used in this video will be linked, so you can click over if you want to try some of these techniques out. Thanks so much for watching today. I will see you guys in another video very, very soon.